It is often said at occasions like this that it is a great pleasure to welcome you. Um, in this case, for me, it really is. Um, I have uh, fantasized, let us say, for a number of years about being able to bring together a group of scholars from Australia, people who work in Hong Kong, Taiwan, China, Japan, on the topic of religion and locality um, in the Chinese world. Uh, it's something that has been an eternal fascination for me, or at least a fascination for a number of years to me. And I discover um, for others as well. And so to see the faces of people I've known for some time and the faces of people I have only just met but who work in this field is um, truly gratifying. In particular, I'd like to welcome several people uh, to this gathering. Um, our two keynote speakers, first, um, I think I can say my old friend David Palmer, um, who we've known each other off and on and through email and various meetings here and there um, for some time, author of uh, Qigong Fever, The Question of Religion in Modern China, and other great works. It's a wonderful pleasure to have you here, David. I'm so pleased that you could come. And also to Professor Chin Ji Dong, um, who we will hear from later, and I will withhold my remarks about Professor Chen for a little while. Um, and it's also wonderful to welcome three um, superb scholars from Academia Sinica in Taipei. Um, I will introduce them as, as the conference goes on. But this, this conference is, to some extent, uh, part of uh, an exchange agreement, an exchange arrangement that we have with the Institute of Ethnology at the Academia Sinica in Taipei. And it's, um, it's wonderful that uh, that institute was able to take some of our students and younger scholars for a, a very intensive winter school in last January. And it's lovely to be able to return the favour by bringing three of the scholars from Academia Sinica here uh, for this conference tonight. Over the next two days, well, tonight and then Tuesday and Wednesday, we'll be looking closely at um, the conjunction of the questions of religion and locality across the Chinese world. We have speakers working on the mainland, on Taiwan, on Macau, um, across different groups and types of religion. It's a, it's a program which I hope if you've, seen, if you've seen the outline, you too will find fascinating and you're all welcome to come to any or all of it. Um, tonight, of course, we have the uh, key, one keynote address from Professor Chen. Tomorrow night, in this same room, the keynote address from uh, Dr. Palmer. Um, I will introduce Professor Chen in a little while, but I'd li now like to call on the director of the centre that I belong to and which is running this as, a, as an institution, the Australian Centre on China and the World, um, the director, Professor Jeremy Bame, to give us some welcoming remarks. <laughs> thank you, Jeremy. Jen, thank you. Um, my name is Jeremy Bame. I, um, I, I won't take up too much time because I, I actually really hated conferences, lots of opening remarks. Um, our centre is called in Chinese the Aodalia Zhonghua Quan Xiu Yan Ju Zhongxin. And we very purposefully chose the term to try and cut against the grain of the accepted use of what we call the geopolitical term, China, or just Zhongguo, because we're so aware, as this conference is, of the interrelated and complex interscaned realities of the Chinese world. And as this conference title um, in Chinese says, it's Zhonghua Shijie, the Zhongjiao Yu Xing. So it relates to the very nature of that, the integument, the interconnectedness of um, systems, ideas, beliefs, and values within the world that, as our center tries to understand, generates and understands meaning through the Chinese world, the world that uses Chinese languages, ideas, traditions, belief systems to comprehend and create meaning for humanity. 
And that's one of the reasons our centre was created. We were established as a result of a, a federal a Commonwealth government, government support to create a centre that tries to engage with the Chinese world, the so-called the Zhonghua Shijie, rather than just Zhonghua, in a way that's more integrated, that engages with the overlapping realities of that world that so many of our scholars and friends and colleagues work on and understand, but which is too much and too easily limited by crude geopolitical contemporary realities and requirements. So it's a great delight to be um, able to, for our centre, to support and um, hold this conference here at the ANU. I hope uh, next time that you come, well, I don't really hope, I know that you will be um, gathering next time in the building that is being built next to this building, which you see Crane up there, that is where our centre is um, creating a building for itself, so next time there will be, our facilities will be there. It is a, a great pleasure to be able to welcome you all here today and to thank Ben in particular, as well as Paul Farrelly, who's played such a key role, and our other colleagues, Jasmine and Lynn and Nancy Chu, in organising and carrying out and well, working on the logistics for this event. But I won't go on because, I mean, you're more interested in hearing Professor Chen rather than hearing me go on. Thank you, Ben. And welcome you all. So to the business of this evening's lecture. Um, Professor Chen Jidong, uh, I first came across as a scholar of um, what we call modern Buddhism. Uh, modern Buddhism is a locution developed by, amongst others, the American scholar Donald Lopez to describe the, the new kind of Buddhism that arose at the end of the 19th century and the 20th century in various parts of Asia and, indeed, of the West. Um, it always occurred to me reading Lopez's work, which concentrates his own specialization is on Tibet, but he writes about modern Buddhism across, across the world, across the region. But it always occurred to me that work on this kind of modern Buddhism in China was actually one of the areas that was least researched in the field. And Professor Chen is one of the people who has been a trailblazer and a pioneer in this area. His PhD research is, was on the Buddhist layman, a young Wenhui, from the late Qing, uh, particularly in the late Qing, uh, a, a figure of really great importance and one that should be known much more in fact than he is. Um, but to introduce Professor Chen a little more fully, uh, I'm told, I found out yesterday, that he originates in Hefei and was a, an undergraduate student in Peking University. I also found out that he um, completed a master's degree at Beida in the same years that I happened to be a Liu Xuesheng at Beida myself. And indeed, he was working in the Department of Philosophy, and I was working in the Department of Philosophy at the same time. Um, we didn't meet. At least, I don't know that we met. I don't remember meeting. Uh, and what was even more coincidental was that the supervisor of his master's work was also the professor who was looking after me, Tang Yijie, uh, at the time. As I remember, actually, Professor Tang was very often not in Beijing because at the time he was helping to establish a university in Shenzhen. So he happened to be in Shenzhen most of the time. So. I'm not sure, you probably saw much more of Professor Tang than I ever did. Um, but uh, after graduating with his master's degree, uh, Professor Chen was given a job, teaching job, in the philosophy department of Peking University. But um, after certain incidents in 1989 and the, uh, the life that young scholars were um, Encouraged to maintain after those years in terms of political study and so forth, many younger scholars left uh, China. Um, Professor Chen moved to Japan, where he went to Tokyo University and proceeded to study for a PhD, uh, this PhD on Yang Wenhui, which he completed successfully before moving to a job at a small university in Tokyo, before moving three years ago to, as you can see, Aoyama Gakuin University, which is also in Tokyo, an establishment uh, originated by the Methodist Church. Um, although I don't know that there's a lot, a lot of Methodism in Professor Chen's uh, lecture tonight. So it is a great pleasure 
uh, to introduce Professor Chen Jidong. Um, I am an unashamed fan of his work, as you might gather, and I think that having had a look at the lecture already, it's a, a truly wonderful piece of scholarship, and I hope you will find it as stimulating and interesting as I have done. Um, now, I think that you should have copies of the English translation, is that right? Those of you who want them. Professor Chen will speak in English during his lecture, but during the question and answer period afterwards, he will speak in Chinese, but our colleague Zhu Yayun will um, interpret questions and answers where required for that period. So, without further ado, Professor Chen, it's lovely to see you. Thank you. Good evening. Uh, many thanks to uh, Dr. Benjamin Penny and his colleagues, uh, colleagues and uh, his staffers. Uh, it's uh, uh, really uh, a great pleasure and a great honor to be here uh, to share with my most recent research. I'm uh, so excited uh, to fly all the way across the uh, equator for the first time to come to this beautiful country. And before coming to this room, uh, Dr. Benjamin uh, took us, took us a, a wonderful, uh, gave us a wonderful uh, curation. <laughs> so uh, with uh, over excitement, I'm, I have a little bit uh, afraid. I'm afraid that I would disappoint you uh, because I may not know how far I would stray my topic. Uh, but I still hope uh, that my research uh, would interest you, and any criticism will be most welcome. Um, <clears throat> my concentration is the uh, uh, exchange is, is the exchanges between Japanese and uh, Chinese Buddhists uh, in late 19th century, uh, and the uh, influence uh, of the Buddhist studies from the West. Uh, both Chinese and Japanese uh, Buddhists began respectively to pay more attention to the collection of original Buddhist, Buddhist uh, scriptures in Sanskrit and Pali. With a shared interest, the Chinese and the Japanese uh, Buddhists uh, encountered uh, and had some collaboration. Uh, why uh, resulting uh, uh, to the Buddhist sutras, uh, the Chinese and the Japanese had their different motives and objectives that reflected their own heritage and confrontation. <clears throat> I think I will, uh, uh, that what I am concerned here uh, falls uh, exactly into the main theme of this uh, confer conference, religion, uh, religion and uh, locality. Uh, well, uh, let me uh, read my uh, 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 article. Uh, I, try, I try to uh, speak in English. <clears throat> in search of, uh, oh, I have another, uh, because my uh, uh, the article uh, a little bit uh, long, so I, I uh, have to uh, concentrate, concentrate it, uh, it a little. <clears throat> In a search of uh, Shakyamuni's scriptures, the formation of modern Buddhist studies and uh, Sino-Japanese exchange. From the second half of the 18th century and the first half of the 19th century, uh, accompanying the advance of Western domination over Asia, the Westerners discovered that Buddhism was the shared face of many regions of Asia. It is just as P.C. Elman has said, Buddhism was discovered in the West during the first half of the 19th century. Discovery was due to the unprecedented excavation and collection of Buddhist texts writing in Sanskrit and Pali in such areas as India, Sri Lanka, and Nepal, which wrote about the systematic, uh, systematization of knowledge concerning Buddhism. And the uh, understanding of Buddhism developed by Lips and Bonds. In uh, 1844, 
the French scholar Eugène Bununov wrote a book, it's a very famous book, creating a, a milestone of research on a classical Buddhist scriptures. For this accomplishment, Bununov is considered uh, to be uh, uh, the, uh, the uh, creator of this field of study. According to the uh, recent work by uh, uh, Lopez, Professor Lopez, uh, Budunov's contribution lies in the Indianization, uh, Sanskritization, textualization, and the humanization of the study of Buddhism. Uh, skip it to the next page. <clears throat> uh, Page two. Uh, it can be said that Budunov's work established the direction of Western uh, Bud uh, Bud uh, Bud Budology, offering uh, the pre prelude to modern Buddhist studies. Because of this, in the second half of the 19th century, the search for Buddhist scripture, uh, Buddhist uh, scriptures in Sanskrit and Pali was the most important uh, trendy, uh, trendy, uh, trend, uh, most important trend uh, in the study of Buddhism. Uh, for example, in 1881, the Pali Textile Society was founded in London. The society had that uh, Theravada Buddhism, uh, Buddhism uh, which is based on Pali uh, scriptures, uh, represent the pure original Buddhist doctrine, and that Mahayana Buddhism is a later uh, division. Based on the comparative study of Indian Euro Indo European languages, Max Muller found the discipline of the comparative study, study of uh, religion for the study, study of the development of Indian uh, methods of Oxford. It is a, Oxford University. These tendencies in Western Buddhist studies also influenced Buddhism itself in Asia. Uh, following the example set by the birth of the Meiji state that was determined, uh, uh, determined to learn from the West, uh, Japanese Buddhism too turned its gaze towards the West. In 1872, the young head of the uh, Higashi Honganji, uh, Genyo, uh, traveled secret to the West, accompanied by several trusted uh, subordinates. Uh, stopping over the India, he visited France, Britain, and the United States and other countries, becoming aware of the tendencies in Western scholarship on Buddhism as part of the process. After his return to Japan, he made plans to send monks uh, to the West in order to start Sanskrit scriptures. After several years of planning, it was finally decided in 1876 to send uh, two uh, young monks, Nanjo Bunyu and Kasahara Kenji to Britain. <clears throat> that same year, the Higashi Honganji branch of the True Pure Land sect also opened a branch temple in Shanghai, studying its history of mission work in China, having, and, uh, having undergone, undergone more than two years of training in English, Nanjiu and Kasahala finally decided to enter Oxford University becoming students of Max Muller and studying Sanskrit and Buddhist scriptures. Unfortunately, Kasahala fell fair year and eventually uh, succumbed, succumbed to his illness. With this, Nanjo had to shoot all the expectations of his sect and Muller's uh, supervision, Nanjo who until then had only no Chinese tr translations of the Buddhist scriptures, quickly mastered Sanskrit and started his study of, study of Sanskrit scriptures. 
Mueller suggested to him uh, numerous times to search in Japan, even China and Tibet, for original Buddhist uh, scriptures. Nanjiao took these uh, suggestions honest and not only located sans Sanskrit visions of the uh, Amitabha Astra, uh, the Diamond Astra, and the Heart Astra, among other texts in Japan, but in 1879, uh, 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 also wrote a letter to his senior Ogulus Kocho, who had already conducted mission work in China, requesting him to help locate uh, Sanskrit texts in China and Tibet. In this letter, Nanjo not only described the uh, flourishing a state of Buddhist studies in the West, but also criticized the conservative and ignorant nature of Buddhist scholars in the East, including Japan and China, arguing for the important for the importance of studying Sanskrit texts. This doubtless indicated a new development in the study of Buddhism in East Asia. At the same time, a similar tendency to search for original Buddhist uh, scriptures also emerged in China. <clears throat> At the beginning of the, of the uh, 1880s, 80s, uh, the search of the original doctrine of Shakyamuni, the famous name Xu Xi'an uh, of Suzhou asked another name Shen Shandun to wrote a letter to the Buddhist layman Yang Wenhui, uh, who was working at the Chinese embassy in London, to ask Yang to look for Sanskrit scriptures in the West. However, at, the same, at, the, at this time, Yang had already made the uh, acquaintance of Nanjiao in London and he is engaged in close contact with him. Uh, and still scientifically discussing the state of Western research on Sanskrit scriptures. What can be glanced from their discussion is that they sh uh, shared the idea, shared the idea uh, uh, that a new understanding of Shakyamuni's teaching could be gained through the study of early texts. <clears throat> uh, we can be seen from the above description of the new uh, ten, uh, uh, tendencies in Chinese and Japanese Buddhism. Uh, it's that uh, new ten, uh, trends in Western Buddhist studies did not uh, image, emerge in uh, isolation. <clears throat> but Japan and China both reacted in their own way uh, to them. Uh, entering into uh, intricate, intricate uh, mutual uh, relations and uh, uh, in interactions, interactions, this shows how East Asian Buddhism, which was based on Chinese translations of the Buddhist scriptures, began to take note of the original Indian texts, reflecting the emergence, emergence of a new dawn in the study of Buddhism in East Asia. However, the two letters mentioned above by Chinese and Japanese Buddhists have so far not re received scholarly attention. And even the uh, <clears throat> Uh, specific uh, uh, nature of the tendencies that characterized this new dawn of Buddhist studies are not well known. This paper, therefore, uh, describes the content of these letters and uh, considers the uh, intersecting uh, relations between Chinese uh, this Chinese and Japanese Buddhists, thus indicating how Chinese and Japanese Buddhists uh, entered 
this history change uh, trend, change in trend. Uh, one, uh, a letter from Oxford, the search for Sanskrit Buddhist scriptures and the uh, cri uh, critical of their Chinese translations. On June 24, uh, 1876, uh, Nanjiao Bunyu and uh, Kasahara Kenji were, were uh, dis uh, dispatched by uh, the Higashi Honganji, a branch of the True Pure Land sect, <clears throat> uh, uh, to Britain in order to study uh, the Sanskrit and uh, familiarize uh, themselves uh, with uh, Western scholarship on Buddhism. However, uh, <clears throat> Kasahala died of illness uh, halfway through his studies, and Nanjo had to shoot the expectation of his sect. Uh, <clears throat> dedicating himself to uh, this uh, research, he finished his studies in uh, 1884 and returned home to Japan. Two months after Nanjo and uh, uh, Kasahara had departed uh, for Britain, the Higashi Honganji turned its attention to mission work in China the, uh, uh, and ordered Ogulus Kocho and the three others to go to Shanghai in order to found a, a branch temple of the Higashi Honganji. <clears throat> Studying in the West and the mission work in China came to from two new directions in the development of modern Japanese Buddhism. <clears throat> Japanese Buddhists adopted the met uh, methodology, methodologies of Western Buddhist <clears throat> uh, studies, creating a modern form of Buddhist, uh, Buddhist scholarship that's different from the traditional learning based. Uh, uh, learning. Based on this research, on Buddhists began to uh, diverge from faith in uh, uh, Buddhism, forming an uh, independent academic field of inquiry, <clears throat> such as uh, 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 the, uh, oh, with his return, the study of original uh, scriptures based on Sanskrit also entered Japan. The ph uh, philological and uh, histori his historiographical um, methodologies that Nanjo brought with him ended the more than 1,000 year long history of traditional Buddhist scholarship, which was uh, uh, solely based on the Chinese translations of Buddhist scriptures. It is uh, precisely in this uh, regard that he is uh, praised as the ori origin, origin, originator of uh, modern Japanese Buddhist studies. However, how did the study uh, of Sanskrit scriptures uh, that for, for, uh, forms the heart of modern Buddhist studies unfold its critical reflection, uh, reflection on and uh, critical of the Chinese tra uh, uh, translations, translations. In other words, the issue of this continuity and continuity uh, with traditional Buddhist scholarship in the uh, formation of modern Buddhist studies is not yet clear. In particularly, uh, particular, the thought of Nanjo Bunyu himself has not received the attention and the discussion it deserved. In fact, uh, as Nanjo knowledge of Sanskrit scriptures uh, increased, his critical attitude toward the Chinese translations uh, depended, and he became even more uh, fervent in his search for original Sanskrit scriptures. A letter that Nanjo wrote of Oculus Kocho on March 23, 1879, reflects this attitude. This letter is an important source 
for understanding the ten tendencies uh, existing at the time of the, of the uh, emergence uh, of East Asia Buddhist studies. Uh, skip it to uh, uh, six, page six. Uh, <clears throat> uh, a, uh, uh, let me uh, discuss the main contents. Uh, uh, a, uh, support and uh, uh, expectations for the China mission. Uh, uh, I would like to skip to next page, uh, seven. Uh, B, uh, <clears throat> study life in London and the impressions of Oxford. Uh, Nanjo reported on his uh, and Kasahara's situation in regard to their studies in the two and a half years since arriving in Britain. After arriving in London in August uh, 1876, the two first lived together. In March of the next year, they uh, slipped up, each start staying at the home of an English teacher, what Nanjo refers as Katoku uh, Jukyo uh, is the first translation uh, uh, in, uh, in Japanese. <clears throat> well, uh, they uh, studied English and his uh, history, and uh, from the next month uh, uh, of, the, uh, of that year, Nanja moved on Oxford after being introduced by someone and sinking the uh, Mentor, mentorship, mentorship of the comparative uh, philologist Max Muller began his studies of Sanskrit. Of Sanskrit. Uh, skip to uh, page eight. Uh, Nanjo was great impressed by the town, uh, uh, townscape of Oxford. Uh, <clears throat> although Oxford was only a, a town of uh, 30 or 40,000, it was filled with colleges, an observatory, museum, and churches of all the dominations. Also, there were more than 20 colleges, and the uh, course of subject offered uh, uh, ranged from academic uh, literature and the arts and the religious to all languages, uh, contemporary and ancient. Uh, everything is covered, and nothing left out. Further, why there was still uh, no one who had the degree of doctor of Sanskrit or doctor of sinology. There were 42 persons who pos uh, possessed the rank of doctors. Uh, uh, quoting the expression that was current in the academic circles of Europe at the time, Nigel uh, explained the uh, flour uh, flourishing of Sanskrit stud studies at Oxford. Without doubt, the uh, flourishing uh, scholarly in uh, uh, environment of Oxford led this young man uh, from East uh, feel great uh, marvel, uh, marvel and made him completely uh, Trimble in uh, admiration. <clears throat> the C, studying and Max Muller. <clears throat> Although Nanjo wrote the letter only a month after moving from London to Oxford, he seems to have already deeply felt the importance of Sanskrit texts for the study of uh, Buddhism. <clears throat> Skip to uh, page uh, uh, nine. <clears throat> He has uh, 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 numerous uh, pub, uh, uh, publications, uh, Max Muller, and among them uh, are, were, uh, are also Sanskrit grammar, uh, apart from having translated the uh, Lig uh, Lig uh, Veda, Lig Veda on one of four uh, Vedas of uh, Brahm, uh, Brahmanism into English. He has also uh, devoted himself to collecting Sanskrit texts and is uh, conducting his search even in Japan. <clears throat> uh, skip, uh, skip to uh, next paragraph. Mueller told Nanjo that uh, Sanskrit had uh, undergone three historical uh, phases. Uh, 
was just skip. Uh, <clears throat> so uh, he also told him, told Nanjo, for the Sanskrit of uh, Tripitaka that Nanjo wanted to study, only three years of diligent studies were necessary to call oneself a scholar of Sanskrit. <clears throat> it was uh, precisely through the uh, encouragement uh, he uh, received from Max Muller that uh, Nanjo decided to leave London, move to Oxford, become Mu uh, Muller's uh, uh, disciple, and study Sanskrit. Uh, in March of the, that year, Muller also arranged a uh, Sanskrit teacher for him to directly uh, instruct uh, his, uh, Nanjo in his studies of script and grammar. The studies of Nanjo conducted during uh, these months uh, undoubtedly opened a completely new ground for him, and he he plunged into it with completely abandon. Uh, abandon. Uh, next page E. Yeah. To China uh, in search. Uh, of the original Sanskrit scriptures. However, the main objective of this letter was not to merely report on how things have been done going uh, recently, but to gain Oculus cultures help in the uh, search for original uh, te Sanskrit texts in China. Why uh, describing the state of Buddhist studies in Europe Nanjo criticized the ignorance and uh, inactivity of Japanese monks, as well as the uh, shortcomings of the Chinese translations. <clears throat> In the letter, he mentions a recent visit uh, with, uh, with uh, Max Muller, where the two discussed the uh, problem of the Chinese tra translation of the Sanskrit uh, Miller told Nanjo that why he had once been able to find and collect a number of Sanskrit texts in China, uh, <clears throat> he was not able to find even a single text in India. Uh, what exists in India are all copies dating to the uh, medieval uh, period, and that he uh, therefore would very much like to find the scriptures uh, the Xuanzhuang are brought back to China from India. Upon hearing this, Nanjo told Mueller uh, <clears throat> that in August of the uh, last year, uh, the Japanese Buddhist journal Mei Kyo Xinxi published an article men mentioning uh, that China currently has the Han Ch Chinese, uh, Tibetan, and uh, uh, Manchu Buddhist canon, can, uh, canons, and uh, that apart uh, from this, the Tibetan uh, Buddhist temple, Zhen uh, Rongyuan on Mountain Wutai, also holds a Sanskrit canon. <clears throat> uh, the author of this uh, incredible uh, article was no one other than Ogurus Kocho. Because of this, Nanjo uh, sought to uh, confirm this matter with Oculus, and if uh, proven true, was hoping to first obtain uh, a catalog, a catalog of the works, uh, including the canon, and then later go in and copy them. Uh, uh, skip to uh, next page. <clears throat> Uh, Nanjo and Muller uh, must have understood, understood very well that if this was true, it would constitute an uh, incomparable shock to uh, Western academy, uh, academic academia, which was at the time busy uh, excavating, excavating Sanskrit scriptures in India and labor. Uh, therefore, Nanjo stayed 
the Professor Mueller was also highly uh, surprised, encouraging me uh, uh, incessantly upon hearing about the existence of this uh, Sanskrit canon, Mueller was greatly uh, surprised, uh, su su uh, surprised and uh, beseech, beseeched Nanjo to go and search for it. Uh, in the letter, Nanjo brought up again the relationship between Oglus and the Tibetan monk and wanted Oglus to directly uh, enlist the help of the uh, monks on mon Mountain Hai, while Nanjo himself also requested the education division uh, of the uh, Higashi Honganji to take part in the uh, project of copying uh, the uh, list of Sanskrit uh, canonical uh, scriptures of Mountain Wutai. Uh, uh, skip, uh, skip the next page. <clears throat> Alongside urging Oculus, call, Oculus to contact the monk on Mountain Wutai and begin the search for the Sanskrit canon, he also pointed out in this uh, uh, passage that the matter uh, <clears throat> impinged on the uh, repetition of Buddhists because the strength of Western scholars lies in their historical uh, eradication and their uh, vigorous search for and the collection of Sanskrit scriptures. It is very likely that they will re-translate the Buddhist canon in the near future. And it is because of this that Nanjo stated that if we build, uh, Buddhists uh, delay this uh, pursuit, uh, I fear that we will, we will be uh, overtaken. Uh, this statement doubtlessly expressed his uh, competitive uh, consciousness toward, towards, to, towards the Western scholars and his sense of uh, criticism. <clears throat> E, Nanjo's critical of Japanese Buddhism and of the Chinese translations of the Buddhist uh, canon. Furthermore, Nanjo also listed the meaning of the translations um, made by Western scholars of Sanskrit texts and pointed out uh, that they have also began translating Chinese and the Tibetan scriptures, uh, scriptures faced with the uh, brilliant accomplishments of Western scholars, uh, Nanjo uh, had no other choice to, to return them to critically reflect on the study of Buddhism in Japanese itself. Uh, skip to, skip to uh, 13, next page, 13 page, uh, page 13. Based on this, Nanjo uh, proceeded to develop his critic of the existing of uh, Chinese translations, opening uh, asserting, asserting that even the uh, uh, unassailable assailable, uh, new translations by Xuanzhuang could not be uh, maintained to be without form. Although Japanese monks read the uh, Abhidharma and uh, Yokachala works very closely. Uh, they do not know the difference between the old and the new uh, translations, such as the Kanzaiyong uh, Guanshin and Kanji Zai Guanji Zai, or Liu Ju Tianqin Long Shu Tianqin, and Liu Miao Seixin Long Meng Shiqin, refer to the same. Uh, entities uh, respectively. According to Nanjo, this, this is all common uh, knowledge of Western scholars of Sanskrit. Uh, <clears throat> so, uh, in the face of Western scholars uh, well uh, versed uh, in knowledge of the past, Japanese monks 
uh, how to be uh, ashamed, uh, ashamed. This safe, uh, critical attitude clearly shows Nanjo's uh, 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 eagerness for uh, ac academic uh, uh, <coughs> erudition, erudition. And it also reflects the sense of humi humiliation that uh, torment, tormented this very proud young, young man from the East, from the East. The critic of Xuanzhuang's translation found in the letter is doubtlessly the first time a Japanese monk had evaluated the text in more than a thousand years. Actually, concerning uh, this point, Nanjo's teacher, uh, Max Mueller, had friendly expressed a similar opinion. <clears throat> Mueller had pointed out that either because the Chinese translator did not understand the special Sanskrit uh, used, in the, uh, uh, used in the original scripture or because the Indian translators could not use the correct Chinese expressions, the majority uh, of Chinese translations of the uh, Buddhist, uh, Buddhist uh, sec uh, uh, sec sacred, uh, sacred, sacred, sacred uh, scriptures are highly uh, imperfect. Mueller's attitude uh, doubtlessly also influenced uh, Nanjo's critique of the Chinese translation. <clears throat> after not uh, only, uh, an, uh, after not even two and a half years of studying in Britain and studying uh, Sanskrit for uh, not even a month, Nanjo Bunyu had uh, immersed himself in the study of Western uh, body allergy. Body allergy. <clears throat> Acute, acutely uh, realizing its effectiveness and significance and quickly took on a critical attitude towards the traditional uh, tradition of Chinese translations. His import of Western ac academic uh, trend, uh, trends and the uh, methodology, methodology for uh, contemporary Japanese Buddhist uh, circles signaling the generation of a new area for the study of Buddhism in uh, East Asia. Uh, to uh, an uh, ancient letter to London, uh, clarifying the Japanese uh, translations uh, uh, through the Sanskrit scriptures. Why Yang Wenhui was uh, post, uh, po uh, posted in Britain and France, he, the prominent Buddhist layman Xu Xian, uh, Xu Xian from uh, Suzhou in, entrusted the layman uh, Shen Shandong with writing a letter in uh, his uh, letter to uh, Yang, Yang living in faraway London. He hoped that Yang would be able to look for Sanskrit Buddhist uh, texts text in uh, London, intending to uh, include uh, recompilations of them in the Buddhist canon. However, because the uh, elderly Xi'an knew, uh, Xi knew that uh, the uh, translation of Sanskrit scripture will be would be uh, considerably uh, costly, and because Yang's term uh, abroad was coming to uh, an end, Yang would uh, def uh, definitely uh, not not be able to take in, uh, take on uh, this task, and Xu Xian therefore did not send the letter after it. 
uh, after it had been uh, composed. Later, Shenshan then includes the letter in his own Bao Enlun, and the title a letter to Yang Wenhui, uh, written for uh, Xu Xian, <coughs> and edited then afterward, in which he explained the uh, back background of the letter. Of the letter, the letter does not clearly state the date of its. Uh, com uh, compositions, uh, but uh, as Yang Wenhui returned to China in uh, 18, uh, uh, eight, uh, is uh, wrong, uh, 86, after completing his term, uh, the letter must have been uh, written before this year. According to the uh, contents uh, of this letter, Xu Xian had learned from a Japanese monk uh, conducting mission work in China about the state of the collection of Indian uh, Buddhist uh, Sanskrit scriptures as well as heard that a Japanese monk, uh, Dongsen, he said uh, in Chinese, Lemini Nanjiao Bongyu, was uh, translating uh, 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 sutras. <clears throat> Moreover, he also wrote Nanjiao hoping that he would translate uh, the uh, catalog of the more than 300 uh, Sanskrit texts discovered by the West in ch into Chin Chinese, planning to uh, incorporate uh, corporated in a new edition of uh, Buddhist canon. That Western research on Buddhist uh, scriptures reached China via Japan. <coughs> Sub, sub, subsequently, uh, subsequently uh, evoking an uh, extra, uh, extraordinary uh, influence uh, uh, is of extremely great historical uh, significance. Xu Xian is one of a small number of Chinese Buddhists who were uh, engaged in um, uh, uh, and through a scientific uh, exchange with Japanese Buddhist uh, priests, he had privately uh, uh, financed the publication of the missionary uh, pam pamphlet, Zhenzong uh, uh, which Ogurus Kocho had composed in Chinese and was in close contact with the Japanese uh, priest uh, uh, Masumoto uh, Haka in the letter, she also touched upon uh, uh, the uh, assistance he had received from Masumoto. He is even more important is that he expressed his intention to search for Sanskrit scriptures. Uh, let me introduce uh, contents. Uh, a, plans uh, for a new uh, company, uh, compilation of uh, compilation, uh, compilation, compilation of the uh, Buddhist canon. Uh, I would like to skip uh, to next uh, page. Uh, uh, next page. The aim, uh, uh, last, uh, the last uh, graph, the aim was to uh, compile a more convenient and more complete canon using uh, uh, prominent texts from the 2,000 years of scripture exchange between uh, China and Japan. Uh, <coughs> B, uh, compiling uh, Sanskrit uh, scriptures for uh, inclusion in the canon. <coughs> Simon uh, turning uh, turning uh, listlessly, uh, uh, she also heard from Yang Wenhui and a Japanese Japanese monk that Britain was searching far and wide for Sanskrit scriptures and had collected uh, more than three hundred Sanskrit, uh, Sanskrit texts in the process. Uh, 
80% of these were uh, Theravada scriptures, and only a few were Mahayana ones. <clears throat> Uh, the Japanese uh, uh, priest who was uh, none other than Nanjo Bungyu had already translated the Diamond uh, Sutra and uh, Amitabha Sutra. However, she uh, uh, deemed uh, that Britain was not engaged in the collection and the study of Sanskrit for uh, our uh, I'll trust the <laughs> Zetic, uh, uh, but uh, the reasons, but for the admin, administration of the vessel uh, states. Uh, <clears throat> uh, there is a, uh, everywhere an anthracism for uh, uh, preserving uh, Buddhism, Buddhist uh, remains. That is uh, 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 enthusiastic enthusi uh, enthusi uh, enthusi uh, preservations, preservation of uh, Buddhist remains and objects uh, arose out of the administration, uh, administration of the uh, Colonials. She expressed towards Yang Wenhui his wish to open a Sanskrit academy and widely teach students. Furthermore, he also wanted to uh, open, uh, obtain a catalog of the more than 300 extant Sanskrit scriptures and include in the canon that was to what, that, that was to be compiled in the uh, future. Let's skip to the next uh, uh, page. <clears throat> uh, C, the significance of Sanskrit scriptures in uh, responding to Confucian uh, critics of Buddhism. <clears throat> in the letter, she, she um, stated that the extents of the Sanskrit scriptures can uh, contribute a firm uh, a foundation to a response against the Confucian attacks on Buddhists. Firstly, Chinese monks were uh, tainted by the content uh, suspicion that the uh, scriptures in the canon were written by uh, Pelagian uh, Pelagian uh, rising and uh, stealing from the six classics, Liu Jing, Lun Yu, Mengzi, Laozi, Zhuangzi. Since Nanjiu's new translation and the old translation were mostly identical, uh, this proved that the translators of old did not merely fabricate things based on their uh, personal uh, beliefs, and that the Buddhist uh, stories were not texts that were invented in isolation for foreign monks and their uh, uh, dis 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 uh, disciples after the death of the Buddha. Therefore, the discovery of the Sanskrit scriptures uh, had a double, a doubt, double uh, meaning for Chinese Buddhists. Not only did it uh, restore uh, devotion based on the still living teaching of a lost people uh, of India, it could also uh, dispel the uh, vilification, vilification of Buddhism uh, that originated in Song Confucianism. Three, uh, reading the original scriptures of uh, Shakyamuni, the exchange between Yang Wenhui and Nanjiu Bongyu. Uh, <clears throat> uh, so I have to uh, quickly. <laughs> so uh, uh, I uh, a little uh, uh, 
has uh, interest a, a little bit. In 1866, uh, 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 Yang Wenhui uh, founded the uh, Jinling uh, Scripture Press in Nanjing, uh, uh, thinking that in order to uh, rebuild Chinese Buddhism, which had uh, declined even further due to the attacks suffered at the hands of the Taiping uh, rebellion. Uh, it is uh, of uh, foremost importance to print and uh, circulate Buddhist uh, scriptures. He gradually ex uh, expanded his oper uh, operation using all his energy to promote Buddhist studies and uh, education and thus become the uh, central uh, figure in late Qing uh, Buddhism. So uh, I just uh, uh, read the, the conclusion uh, between uh, the exchange of his, him and uh, Nanjiao Bengyu. Uh, uh, skip to page 24. Uh, uh, 24, yeah. Uh, Yang Wenhui was in deep uh, admiration of Nanjiao's views discussed above and uh, uh, thought that Nanjiao did not only uh, clearly explain many historical problems, but that the work he was involved in was also something that no Chinese had accomplished in hundreds of years. He was full of praise for the originality of Nanjiao's scholarship. Yang uh, furthermore wanted to publish Nanjiao's findings in China and uh, introduced the Chinese uh, readership to it. Furthermore, he wanted to uh, dispatch young Chinese to study Sanskrit in Euro Europe. Thus, Nanjiao and Yang believed uh, that the original form of Buddhism could be uh, uh, revived through the study of Sanskrit scriptures. Uh, so, uh, that's the last uh, the conclusion. Uh, let me uh, read my uh, conclusion. Uh, I think uh, we are all ties. Uh, uh, <clears throat> in addressing this uh, workshop theme of religion and the question of uh, locality and history, I wish to emphasize that the search for Shakyamuni's scriptures was not just part uh, part of the uh, trend of returning to original Sanskrit scripture, it also reflected a spe uh, specific issue faced by Sino Japanese Buddhists. In short, uh, 26, in short, one of the main purpose of the search for the original Sanskrit scriptures was to provide evidence of the uh, doctrine. Uh, uh, orthodoxy of the true pure land sect. At the same time, improving the level of Japanese Buddhist studies by assimilating Western research uh, on the classic Sanskrit scriptures and uh, uh, following the uh, pro progress of Western studies was an important approach for the true pure land sect in gaining respect and the social uh, status uh, with Japanese Buddhism. At the time when old Japan was feeling the ex uh, effects of learning from the West, the attempt uh, of uh, westernized or internationalized Buddhist studies was a real opportunity for Buddhism to uh, restore its uh, declining uh, status after the Hakushaku, uh, Haibutsu Kishaku anti-Buddhist movement of the early Meiji period. By contrast, the interest of Chinese Buddhists in the discovery of Shakyamuni's original scriptures of Chinese Buddhists uh, <coughs> uh, in the discovery of Shakyamuni's original scripture was not simply about proving the 
uh, accuracy of the face. Uh, more importantly, it was to uh, respond to criticism from the Confucian establishment and prove, to prove the historicity and uh, uh, authenticity of the Chinese translations of the Buddhist scriptures. At the same time, uh, <clears throat> incorporating over 300 Sanskrit scriptures discovered in the West into the newly edited uh, Tripitaka res restored uh, the tradition of uh, Tripitaka compilation, uh, compilation and uh, uh, re established it, its uh, legitimacy. Uh, thus, issue uh, of the Indianization of Buddhism and the uh, local uh, characteristics of China and Japan are uh, reviewed in the attitudes of Buddhist, Buddhist uh, uh, followers from each country in their uh, treatment of the original scriptures of Shakyamuni, Buddhists from China and Japan, uh, <coughs> had uh, different uh, motivations for seeking uh, the same original scriptures and uh, standpoints towards them due to their own traditions and uh, circumstances. However, it must not to be forgot forgotten um, <coughs> that uh, although the original scriptures were from the home of Shakyamuni, uh, they emerged in Europe, Euro European language, languages. <coughs> now, though, both Chinese and uh, Japanese Buddhists had to uh, take interpretations of the original scriptures that came from beyond the Buddhist world. Uh, seriously, this undoubtedly led to a fundamental change uh, in East Asia, uh, in East Asia Buddhist studies. In uh, Lopez's words, uh, the subsequent, the subsequent, the, uh, the, uh, subsequent area for East Asian this was not simply a period of redemption, 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 but also a period of loss. Thank you very much. Thank you.